Welcome to Illo Talk, episode 120. I am Corey Kerr, and today I want to try something that freaks me out because there's supposed to be growth there or something if you get freaked out. Um, so, anyway, so we've got this drawing. You guys have probably seen work on this. All right. And so it's getting there. There's some, there's some good parts to it. There's some mistakes that I hate. And that's that. But up in the clouds, um, my plan is I want to gradiate the sky a little bit with some line work. And you can see some line work here. I don't know if that's clear. Maybe I'll take a picture and show you. But um, I want to do tiny little lines. And so... I've been practicing this technique on this uh, scrap piece of paper, and it's pretty scary um, because at this stage I start to get really precious with my drawings, where I want to like protect them and not screw them up. Um, but it's not done yet. It's not the point where I'm like overworking it. Um, I've just put so much time into it at this point that it's like scary. So uh, I got to push through that. And I thought maybe that I would just do this just live without any cuts. Um, so I'll cut once after this to readjust the camera, but I'm just going to talk through how it's going. And so you might see me ruin this drawing or um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But um, one of the things I do with original art pages that I have, is I study how um, other illustrators are using uh, techniques. And so I'll show you two pages from Sean Gordon Murphy. This one is from Punk Rock Jesus. And, uh, and you can see like in the static panels where we've got just people sitting there, there's not much movement, but right there and here and there, we start to have a lot of like speed lines and not just speed lines, but like, you know, so there's speed lines right here, right? You can see that pretty easily. Um, right over here, we've got some speed lines. Okay, but on this side, over here, um, we've also got some stuff, right? And so those are just tiny little lines. He uses a ruler to do that. And I've seen this technique done, but I've never had the balls to do it on one of my things. And so tonight is the night. Um, here's another one. This is another Sean Gordon Murphy piece. Um, and I like, I like this one. This is from his book, uh, Cafe Racer. And let me just show you some close up. So check out the lines in the clouds there. I don't know if the camera is going to be able to focus, but there's just hundreds of tiny little lines and where they begin and end, um, it has an effect on the overall shape and the value. Um, that's being shown here. And so uh, Sean is just a master of this type of thing. So anyway, so you can kind of see, I'm just going to show you kind of panel by panel here. And just pay particular attention to kind of the lines down. This one, it's a little bit messier. Things have slowed down. The pacing is significantly different. And so up here, they're racing and there's bombs dropping and there's planes crashing. And then this last panel, he, he switches from lines to more of a static um, kind of fingerprint and smudges. There's not as much motion. There's still, some, there's still some emotion, but it's not speed motion, right? It's more, um, it's more just watching the city just be destroyed. And so what I'm going to attempt is kind of this effect here, um, where the clouds and the explosion are kind of made out of uh, little lines. And, um, and you can see the imperfection of this, but, but he's just so dang good. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a micron right here and a ruler. And I will hold the ruler. Where's my ruler? Um, the way that I've seen people do this, and if you guys know of a different way, please tell me in the comments. That would be awesome. Um, but the way that I've seen people do this is you hold it kind of at an angle and instead of being flush, because if you're flush, you can be too 
just takes forever. But this way, I can just go really quickly, right? And so that's what I'm gonna do. All right, let's do this. Uh, before I ruin anything though, I am going to take a couple more practice runs here. And so the idea is to kind of fix, fix the position of the ruler. If I can get the cap off here. Thinner. Closer together. That's what I'm trying to avoid right there. Blobs. And trailing off. So that's pretty good. I might come in and do another shape or something in the middle here. I'm probably going to try to do some mountains. And so I don't want any defined lines in the sky because I'm trying to make it feel atmospheric. See, that's a problem right here. Ooh, look at that line. If I do something like that, it's going to ruin the whole thing and everyone will hate me. Also, one thing that's super annoying is these ridges are catching on the, are catching on the ruler. Is there like an angle that I can hold it at that's better? Like that, and then I need to go straight on. Okay, so I'm noticing that it's dipping a little bit, so I'm gonna move my thumb over, and hopefully it won't pivot as much. Maybe my pinky now. Let's see. Yeah, that's a lot more solid. So my thumb being over is really helpful. I've got to go straight on. I feel like I'm trying to go too fast. Okay, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch pens here, and let's try. this big marker because you can still get a fairly fine line out of this oh that's so much better yeah i like this better well that's i don't know that's a little harder to control though let me see if i can do this without i might do this for the darker parts it's a thicker line and i get better line variation out of it um but for some reason, I'm not able to control it as easily as the Micron. Yeah, that's too big. Okay, I can't move the ruler in the middle of this. Yeah, that's too big. I really like it though. I might come in to, to darken some parts up a little bit. But I want, I, want, I want this one more than I want this one. So that's, I like that. Going underneath is way easier on this one. This is something that I think I didn't give myself permission to do enough. Um, when I was first starting out is just like I felt this need to like keep everything that I drew. Including like I never did any practice sheets or anything. It was like it was like that would be a waste of something. I don't know what I expected it to be a waste of, but like this idea that I'm just going to throw this paper away when I'm done. The younger artist in me would freak out at that. Why am I wasting my time? An ink. I don't know. It's funny the things that we freak out about. Okay. 
Now I'm, now I'm just messing around. Uh, all right, I've decided I'm not going to use this one at first, so I'm gonna get a lot of lines down with my micron. Um, now I just wanna practice a little bit um, up against the cloud lines. And so I'm gonna have like some mountains, something like that. And then I'm gonna have the edge of clouds. Um, so I'm just gonna practice just starting in different places. I'm gonna start on the edge of these clouds, but I'm gonna thicken it along the edge of these mountains. Now I can't remember what is the best height. That's a good height. One thing that I really like about this technique is I could do this in, for, in like 30 seconds in the computer, but it will look like it was done in the computer. And this way, um, it, it looks beautifully imperfect. What I love about it is there's little blobs and things like that that are kind of just a little hint um, that a real person did this. And I feel, like, I feel like our eyes hone in on those little bits of imperfection. Um, and there's value in that. Okay, I'm gonna come back in and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the edge of, that looks all right, I need to start spacing that though. I noticed that over here, this seems bigger than over here. Um, I must be moving my ruler or something. Maybe I forgot to move my thumb in. I don't remember to put my thumb in when I do this for real. Uh, one thing that I'm noticing though is that I'm able to eyeball. It's hard, if I were to put the ruler down, then I could come in and I could line everything up. But because it's, because it's tilted, um, it just functions differently. So I'm just gonna come down in here line it up and tilt it up. And then I just want to just reinforce with shorter lines. I just want to reinforce this edge. Yeah, those stupid. Okay, I'm going too fast now. I can't get impatient. This is one thing that will absolutely kill this technique is if I get impatient at all. Okay, so over here I'm noticing that um, I'm tightly packing mine too much. And so he's spacing it out quite a bit. And they're actually in little groups. And so I see one, two, three, four, five, six. There's, there's only six lines there. There's probably 12 there because it's it's twice as much. But then there's there's gaps. And then those gaps, those are super awesome. And there's like little edges of mountains and stuff. Okay. Woo! All right, let's do it. I am so freaked out that I'm going to ruin this drawing. But if I do, I will survive. And uh, the drawing will not. That's okay. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna line up some stuff and I'm going to get my basic edges. I'm trying to decide whether I want this portion to be super packed, super tightly packed, or actually black. And um, I think I'm gonna just go with, with really tightly packed. So I'm gonna kinda start here. Okay, remember to get my thumb across. And I'm gonna lock this down. Why am I struggling with this so much? Okay, like that. Is that solid? That doesn't feel stable. Okay, hold on. This is why we practiced, and now that I'm doing it for real, it's not, it's not working. The edges of the micron are getting in the way. Maybe my ruler's in the wrong spot. There we 
go. That's not bad. I'm going to make them a little closer together in certain spots just as they approach that black part. This line, implied line here. That's okay. Okay, right, let's move this down. Keep my thumb, my left thumb's going to be spread out. Okay, kind of screwed that one up. Come down a little bit more. There's got to be a better pen for this. These stupid ridges on this thing are in the way. I wonder if anybody's ever done this successfully with Crow Quill. Oh man, shorter is so much easier. That's amazing. You know what? On the little short bits, I'm not going to use a ruler. I don't need a ruler. For the shorter parts, so that looks all right. I kind of need to be careful on the end there. Um, so now I'm just going to do a couple halfway marks. And I'm going to kind of group these up a little bit. So I'm just thinking this through. Let's line that up, raise it, spread my thumb out. I think the ruler was more this way, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to come in and I'm just going to get just a few. They're not going to go all the way across. And I'm really just trying to define the edge of that cloud. Even though those are a little, a little too close together. And I know I kind of want... I want more lines here. I want this area to be darker than this area. Um, all right, so let's go come across here. I need to move over because I'm going to start over further. And this one must start all the way over here. Some of the I'm going to do varying lengths um, because I want it to I want it to feel very much like a gradient that's just tapering off. My ruler's way off. Okay, I think I'm starting to understand why people are doing just groups of lines because there's really not a good way to keep these all precise. So I'm just going to do a few here. Oh, I think that's okay. I'm screwing this part up though. I might have to come in with a black line, like a thick black line and fix that. We'll see. If I just come in and some. No, I don't like that at all. Okay. So this part just looks great. This part looks like dog meat. So we're getting there, but we're not getting there well. All right, so this is gonna come over. And yeah, it'll come in like this. I don't even know if you guys can see this well, but come up. Stupid pen. Okay, I'm noticing they're tapering off. If I'm at an angle like this, I need to be I need to be dead on more because that will 
No, it still tapers. I wonder if I'm choking too far back on the pen. I'm going to come down a little bit. So I'm trying to... I would normally be listening to music or an audiobook while I do this, but I'm trying to talk you through my thought process. I don't know. Maybe this is super boring for everyone, but... But I thought I'd try it. I'm trying to mix it up. I'm trying to experiment a little bit on this channel as much as I can. Um, I just want a couple spaced out lines up here. I'm trying to make the top here look lighter. So I need fewer lines that are further apart. And I'm not going to cross any of these. I want to vary. So that's okay. I'm just going to come in on the side here. The paper lifts. Sometimes it drives me nuts. I feel like I want to tape it down occasionally. So, sorry, I'm holding my breath, which is also a terrible habit that I have. Um, I learned, used to be a rock climber, and I learned in rock climbing that whenever I get freaked out, my natural response is to hold my breath, which intensifies the freak out. Because then my body starts looking for oxygen, and that's when my legs would start to shake, or my hands would start to shake, or something along those lines. And the problem with that is that you know, these are just so short. I'm just going to put it all the way down. Um, the problem with that is that I would, it affects your ability to climb. And so, oh man, that's way easier. I love that. I might do that the whole time. Let's see, let's do a long one like that. So this one, I've got it flat to the page. And that was a ton easier. I'm still trying to decide why you would do one or the other. But let's try this. I'm going to go all the way across here. Flat to the page. And you can still angle your, you can still angle your pen. Um, in a way that, well, you can get multiple lines without moving your ruler. The real problem that I was having before when I tried to do similar things, I'm screwing this up, um, was that I would have, um, you just have to move your ruler so much. And every time you move the ruler, you risk, every time you move the ruler, you risk it adjusting and not being on correctly, if that makes sense. So like one side will move unevenly. This part is really bothering me. Ugh, I don't know what I want to do there. I feel like if I just keep going, I'm just going to make it worse, though, on that particular part. All right, so there's some sky. And I kind of want to have uh, some mountains in the background, but I want to have those mountains have an implied edge rather than a defined edge. And so I'm going to come in here. Oh, let's get a general idea of, I'm just going to, I'm just going to have two peaks. So I'll just have kind of like that. And, and a second peak there. Okay, so we got my blue line kind of guiding things. These pencils are not as erasable as I would like them to be, but they're they're okay. All right, so I love these pens. I just ordered three more. They're so cool. Because um, the tip is very firm, but flexible enough to where you can actually get um, you can actually get some variation in the line, so you can go you can go super thin, 
or if you push a little bit, you will get a little bit of variation. About as much as you would in a crow quill. Um, they don't go as thin as I would like, which is why I still use mo microns for that, but, but they're pretty good. So I'm going to come in, I'm just going to define some of the edges of this peak. Uh, it's like jumping. I'm going to go a little higher here. You know what? I'm going to go flat. Okay. This is another thing that I learned. Um, let's see if I can show you guys. I don't know if you can see it. Um, but this is another thing that I learned is if you have a ruler, a good ruler, one of the edges is going to be raised somewhat and that's really important because if you put and this also always used to bug me but if you put the it flat on the paper um, and you start inking then when you move that what happens is ink actually gathers along the edge of the ruler and it smears super bad and so if you have this raised edge on the on the side of the ruler um ink will still gather on it but um, it's not touching your paper, so it's a lot better. So I recommend paying very close attention to the ruler itself and what you're doing with it, because if you're using a ruler to ink, which I don't actually do that often, uh, you need to be very particular about which part of the ruler you're using and how you're holding it. That's looking okay. I gotta be careful here. I wanted to find both edges. Missed it. Dang it. That's okay. That is what whiteout is for, which I'm trying to avoid, but at the same time, it's kind of inevitable. So another thing that another thing, and Jake Parker talks about this in SVS, but um you should know what your natural line movement is um, with your arm. And pulling from your shoulder is better than fingers and wrists. And so if I'm doing really tiny lines like I'm about to do, I know that I'm at, I'm at like not quite a 45, maybe like a 30 degree angle is kind of my natural line. And so I'm gonna come in here and flatten out my paper and just do a couple couple little lines just to define this edge. Oh, I'm doing this, I'm already, I'm already going at a slightly different angle and it's tapering in a way that I don't like. So I'm gonna pull off that again. Grab my raised edge of my ruler. Let's come back over here and we'll kind of finish flushing out this mountain. I am definitely going to fix this edge with some white because it is ugly right now. It's just a blobby mess. But I do like how I do like how the mountain is starting to take shape without it actually having a line. And so that's nice how it's doing that. And I'm really only worried about the left edge even though I've drawn the left and the right edge. Um I'm mainly concerned um, with defining the left edge as if um, as if I'm trying to indicate kind of wind, as if there's maybe some wind whipping through. Um, you know, maybe that gives us an indication that we're we're moving kind of quickly here. I might even come in with the thicker side of this uh, marker, maybe, and give myself some some little speed lines on my kind of trailing clouds of glory, right? Some little tapering points on that. Um, on those clouds there. Okay, so that's, that's basically it. I'm gonna keep going on this, but I'm gonna stop talking so that I can focus on it. Um, and you guys can watch this develop and I will sh come back in a moment as I so I finish this thing out. So I've got one more edge to do, and then I am going to darken. I'm going to darken this area here, um, and then I will probably come back in with white 
and separate separate this and maybe give a little bing like I did down here. I don't know if that's on camera or not, but I've got a little burst. That'll look, that'll look good coming off of that glass. So we are quickly approaching the end of the inking of this. This uh, drawing that has kicked my butt. Huge bouts of doubt on this guy. Uh, which is understandable because I don't draw robots or mech as much as I would like. And one of the reasons that I chose to do this was because I am totally unfamiliar with um, like I'm familiar with this genre as a as a viewer and a fan, but not as an artist. And so there's been a lot that I've had to learn. Um, see, I don't like these blobs at the beginning. I wonder if I can separate those out. You know what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to give myself just a nice thick paper line to kind of hide that noise and that mess, the ugliness that's over here. Okay, so we've got one more peak, and I haven't stopped talking, so, you know, there's that. And I'm just going to ignore part of this peak, and these are going to be shorter lines. I'm just going to come in and just suggest that edge. Again, I'm going from the left because I want to I wanna indicate some wind, I want to indicate some movement. One thing that's kind of funny about this is I'm, I'm thinking through things. I've got some flashback memories happening. I remember sitting in kindergarten and, uh, and they were teaching us how to write. And I remember the teacher saying, now don't pick your pen up because if you pick your pen up, you'll never, no matter how hard you try, you'll never be able to get that line to match, um, you know, the second time around. And I, because I'm weird, I totally took that as a personal challenge. And, and I actually think, I mean, I know I abandoned it for years, decades. Um, but I actually think that that challenge of trying to match lines, um, like, like what I would do as a kid is I would do this. I would draw a line and then I would come in very carefully try to continue and add to that line um, in a way that would make it look um, as if I had never picked my pen up. Just because I'm stupid and rebellious, even at five, I was pretty rebellious and I thought, you can't tell me what I can and can't do. Um, and so anyway, just funny things, funny things that we do as kids. But it did give me a lot of line control as a kid that I then let completely go to waste um, as I freaked myself out and gave in to the fear and pressure of things that people said. I like that. I like how that turned out. I'm not going to touch the clouds. I think I'm going to leave them pure white. And so now let us hope that... My white pen doesn't screw this up. I've got several white pens. This is a Pasca. Um, and at times these work really well and at times they do not. And it's, it's for me, these particular types have been really hit or miss. But they're very thick. Um, they kind of drip out quite a bit. And uh, Ryan Otley who draws Invincible. Um, he has this technique that, um, oh crap. This is why I have toilet paper right here. Pardon me. In my professional roll of toilet paper here so I don't ruin everything. And wipe that right up. All right. 
But he would come in and I, pr I could probably use a piece of paper. He comes in and does stuff like this. And so he'll he'll load the he'll load it up and then just kind of spit over the top of it. And it just gives you some nice splatter. I've heard of people doing it with a toothbrush and loading it with white. Um, you can kind of get some directional spray this way, which is kind of cool. Um, I am gonna come in and give myself some. Um, that is not opaque enough. Can I come in and give myself some shine here? It also mixes with the ink really in a really annoying way. I still am looking for a good pen. Um, I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. Also, I've had some minor success with these Uniball white gel pens. Uh, but they tend to be, they clog. Um, and so you use a scrap paper a lot, or I use a scrap paper a lot, and I have to kind of build them up. They tend to scrape themselves off. And so whereas this is wet, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. So I'm just gonna come in and kind of add some shines here. Kind of build that up and spread it out a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna go kind of that camera shine, so it's gonna be taller. I don't wanna break the plane here. And then I'm gonna go wider as well. I've gotta kinda of be careful, because now my scrap paper is absolutely covered in all kinds of white ink. So I'm just gonna throw that on the ground and wipe some of this stuff up. So the reason I'm wiping this up, not that I care about my desk, but I mainly don't want to pick too much of it up on any part of my hand that's gonna hit the paper because I want all the marks that I make to be really deliberate because I'm a control freak and that is a huge problem of mine. So I still need that paper. Dang it. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I need a smaller. There we go. There we go. That's a little nativity-esque, but, well. Maybe I can randomize it a little bit more. Looks okay. I'm just gonna build this one up now. And so I just want a little bit of a shing. I worked as an art director um, at a tiny little company, not worth mentioning. And uh, years ago, straight out of college. And one of my designers, she said, you know, I think I've started to understand how to interpret the sounds that you make. I said, what are you talking about? And I had never realized that I tend to, um, I tend to describe visually what I want people to do with sound effects. And so I guess I was like, yeah, I kind of want it to be like, whoosh, and then, ah! Uh, and, there was this code, and I, I'm sure it was just that I didn't know what I was talking about. This is not, it's not working. Come out. There we go. A little bit of an edge there. And a little bit of a, there we go. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay, wait, 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 wait. While this is doing this, let's build that up. See, it just kind of scrapes and starts picking, picking up that gray. It's super annoying. 
and a disconnect there. Okay. So, 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 I'm going to just do a little bit of a disconnect in some of these edges to suggest separation. Um, but guys, I believe that I am... Pretty close to finished. I'm sure I'm going to noodle with this for a little bit longer, but I mean, at some point, I can't remember who said it. I feel like it was like one of the old masters, but art is never finished. It's just abandoned in a good place. And so one of the things that I really struggle with is abandoning things in a good place because I'm rarely happy with what I do, and so one of the problems that I have is that I'm gonna separate these cords a little bit. Um, it's hard to tell when to stop and stop ruining uh, what it is that you're doing. Because at some point you just have to say. That is as good as this drawing is going to get and any further and I will start ruining it. And so I think I'm approaching, I think I'm approaching that now. And so soonish here, I will stop drawing on this and scan it in the computer and color it. So another thing that I like to do um, that really helps, which I'm about to do now, and I won't record because why would you guys want to watch me do that? Um, is I will change the distance at which I am viewing um, the work. And so I'm at, I'm at like a couple feet. Well, I'm at, I can tell you. Yeah, one foot. What is this? That's a foot. I'm at about a foot right now. And so... I find that if I step back, um, I get a completely different view. And that view uh, changes the way I see the drawing, as well as helping me see stuff that I wasn't seeing before. And so um, there are two ways that I really like to do that that are super helpful. Um, and one comes from uh, my old photography days, which is a hobby that I abandoned for other pursuits. Um, and that is that I will photograph, uh, I will photograph what I'm working on. And the reason that that changes, um, the reason that that changes what it is that I'm, how I see things is because um, I've trained my eye to scan the edges of things to, um, to scan the edges of things and to, and to compose the shot through the viewfinder. And so since I'm newish to illustration, um, I find that photographing what I'm working on, I, I never like publish those or anything, but it just gives me um, a different view. And uh, the, I, think, I think the viewfinder flattens it a little bit. And so um, it simplifies what it is that you're looking at. And it just gives you a different view. And I will often see things um, through the viewfinder that I just was tunnel visioned myopically to ignore. Um, so that's one way. And then the other way is I just get up and I walk across the room and I try to get as far away from it as possible, 10 to 15 feet, and just look at it uh, from that distance. Because from that distance, um, the value contrast really starts to show up and the details go away. And so, you know, if you've got so many details that, um, you know, there's no areas of simplicity, then you're losing an opportunity to contrast um, simplicity versus complexity, which is, I think, one of the greatest And most frequently misunderstood contrast that you can get with um, pen and ink. 
uh, is areas of negative space and areas of simplicity versus complexity. And I've tried to I've tried to balance that. Not that I'm a master of it, but I, I can see it. So, for example, you know, this area versus this area, or this area versus this area, this area, um, you know, kind of versus this area. And so I, I'm trying to balance so that there's it's a visual rest gives your eyes a break and your mind a break from processing things so that it's not just a giant overwhelming image. So I'm going to do that now and uh, I'll catch you guys later. As always, um, you can catch my stuff at CoreyKerr.com and uh, check out these videos. And if you are new and this is the first thing you've seen me do, welcome and uh, click on subscribe there and you can check out my Illotalk playlist where I talk about lots of things and my speed drawings where you watch me draw stuff and um, I occasionally do interviews and then I have several like tutorial things and you can see all of that stuff at CoreyKerr.com slash videos um, as well as subscribing. So subscribe, hit that little bell so you get notified, hit that little uh, thumbs up um, so that uh, YouTube decides to start showing these videos to other people um, that are not currently subscribed and uh, leave me a comment. I love comments, so I will catch you guys later. This is kind of a little bit of a different format, so I am curious. Um, I am curious what you guys think of this format as far as um, what I did here, kind of the talk and draw, because usually I will uh, do the narration afterwards and speed it up, and so this was real time. So let me know what you think and what you prefer, and I may or may not listen to you because this is my channel. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Just kidding. But I do like feedback because it is it is interesting. So I'm um, going to fix that part. Okay. I'm really going to leave this time. We'll see you guys later. Bye.